Hey everybody, Rhonda Giraffe here, and um, I'm going to apologize for the quality of this video. I know it's not going to turn out uh, the way I want it to, but I don't have my other camera set up right now. And I just wanted to get this video out to everybody who wants to learn how to make rolled fondant from scratch. So, um, I, you won't see me pretty much through the rest of this video. You'll see me actually working and showing you exactly how to make a really good, uh, tasty, rolled fondant. It's, it's less expensive when you make it at home. It's cool to buy too, but if you're looking to save money and you want to do it from scratch, which I prefer, as most of you know, um, this is how we're going to do it. So um, without any further ado, we'll go over everything. You'll get all the ingredients, the recipe, and you'll watch me do the makeup of a rolled fondant from scratch in my kitchen. All right, let me uh, shut this down and then we're going to uh, fix everything up. Okay, so what you're going to need to start out uh, to make your rolled fondant is you're going to start with a quarter cup of cold water, and we're just going to do all this in this little glass bowl here. So a quarter cup of cold water, and then you're going to take uh, one tablespoon plus two teaspoons of um, unflavored gelatin, and actually I need a little bit more here, so I'm going to grab some more out. And I just get the, uh, I like Knott's gelatin personally. Um, I'm not going to show it on here, but it's spelt K-N-O-X. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to show it or not, so I'm just going to watch my hiney here. Um, so you'll just go ahead and uh, put your one tablespoon plus two teaspoons of the Knox gelatin in. Go ahead and measure that out real quick. One, there's two. And it's, um, you know, pretty close to two packets of the Knox gelatin, just a little bit more. You can also get um, gelatin in a, a jar container if you like to use it that way as well. And then we're going to go ahead and I'm just going to make sure I've got enough here. There we go. So um, then what you'll do is you're just going to let that sit. You'll stir it up a little bit and let it sit. And this stuff's going to look like crap, basically, um, right when you make it. And what you're doing here is you're uh, getting it to a point to where it just flowers up for you. Um, and when I say flowers up, I just mean it's, it's uh, going to sit there. So you can let it sit for about a minute, and uh, that should be good enough. So we're going to go ahead and let that sit. And what we're going to do next, um, after it, this is what it looks like, I hope you can see this good enough, maybe not, um, but it, it, it'll start just looking like, you know, cr uh, goopy mess, basically. Um, so don't let that throw you off when you do it. And some people get a little bit nervous going, what the heck does that look like? But that's what it's supposed to look like. So we're going to go ahead and let that sit. And um, then what we're going to do is we're going to melt this down. Now, one thing that you don't want to do with this is boil it. You just want to get it melted. So you can do one of two things. You can either uh, put it in the microwave and melt it down real quick, or you can, um, you know, put it on a double boiler and do it that way. Um, you know, it's up to you. Some people have really strong microwaves, so you've got to be really careful when you're uh, doing this. Um, I am going to, uh, you know, I'm going to throw it in the microwave real quick, um, just to save time. And I, I know how my microwave works, so uh, I'm going to pause this real quick, and then we're going to come back and show you uh, what it looks like. Okay, so now after you've gotten your gelatin uh, uh, heated and uh, liquefied, you've got your um, Cairo syrup in there, um, and you've got your shortening in. Everything's mixed in really good. Now it's going to be um, a little bit uh, cooled down, just mainly lukewarm, and this is when you're going to add a tablespoon of glycerin in. So we'll go ahead and add that and just stir that in. This is also a really good time to put any kind of flavorings or the color that you want your fondant to be. Um, I'm just going to make a simple white fondant, but I'm also going to use a flavor. Now when you put flavorings in fondant, especially in the white fondant, 
You want to make sure that you use the clear uh, colored uh, flavorings, like the regular vanilla extract that you get on your grocery shelf. It's, it's got that vanilla color. You don't want to use that. You want to use something clear. For my fondant today, I'm going to use an um, almond flavor and just a little bit of almond flavor. And um, the way I measure stuff out is I just do like maybe a half of a cap full, maybe just a brief, th few sprinkles of the almond flavor. Almond flavor is a very powerful, very strong flavor. Um, you can also, you know, flavor your fondant a lemon flavor, a butter flavor, any kind of flavor that you want. But uh, definitely be careful with the almond because it is strong. Okay, so now that we've done this, we're going to take four cups of powdered sugar and put it in a bowl and uh, make a little well in the center and then we're going to start mixing all of that uh, in there. Okay, so now I've got uh, four cups of sifted flour and I've put it in a bowl. I'm just going to make a little well in the center of the um, powdered sugar. And now we're going to pour the uh, gelatin just uh, mixture right into the center of this uh, little well here and we're going to start mixing it by hand. You can also do this with a stand mixer um, but because I know there are a lot of folks out there that do not have a stand mixer, I'm not going to use my stand mixer for this video. I'm just going to, I'm going to do this to where anybody can do this at home. So um, you can see in here I've just made my little well. And what you'll do is you'll start stirring from the center of that powdered sugar mixture and just kind of keep stirring it until it starts gathering around the gelatin and you will see it as it continues to uh, cling on to it. The other uh, four cups of powdered sugar, we're going to um, use that to start incorporating and thickening up this um, fondant and uh, that's when it starts getting molded all together. So we'll go ahead and continue uh, mixing this in until you've got it, uh, you know, all incorporated together and then we're going to uh, come back real quick I'm going to put this on pause for a second so you don't have to watch me uh, doing this. But as you can see, it's uh, already starting to grab. So let me put this on pause, and um, then I'll show you the next step. All right? Okay, so now we're just going to uh, pour the rest of this powdered sugar onto a surface. I've got a, a, a good surface that I'm working on. If you um, are working on a, a table or a... Um, surface that isn't uh, like a granite or anything like that, just make sure that you uh, uh, wax it down pretty good um, with some shortening. So now we're just going to pour the rest of this out and we're going to start kneading the fondant. And you'll, you'll just keep kneading it, incorporating uh, the extra powdered sugar in, and uh, it gets a little bit messy, but that's how it is from scratch when you're doing this this way. It's well worth it. Um, when you make the fondant this way that I'm showing you, it doesn't get as sticky on your hands as uh, some of the other recipes that I've seen out there. It'll get a little bit sticky, but, you know, not too bad. And uh, if, it's, if it's too soft, you know, you'll add a little bit more powdered sugar. If it becomes too dry, just put like a drip of water in at a time uh, to soften it back up. Uh, this uh, recipe here should yield you about 32 ounces of fondant um, or it will, um, you know, uh, cover an 8-inch round cake, one 8-inch round cake comfortably. So we'll just keep going and kneading this and you can see that it is starting to take pretty good form here. All right, so I'm going to pause this again real quick. Okay, so now we've got our fondant rolled up, and um, it's going to look like this, a nice little ball, and then we're going to go ahead and just put it in some saran wrap. I like that cling wrap stuff. I've been using that lately. Um, it works really well. kind of gives it a nice uh, tight seal on it. It's got a, yeah, it's just like a uh, really lock and seal wrap. So um, leave it like that. You can use this actually right away if you want to. Um, 
or you can just uh, let it sit for you know at least eight hours and um, don't refrigerate this just keep it in a nice cool uh, room temperature make sure it's, it's cool not real hot because it'll fall apart on you a little bit um, that's it so that is how you make your rolled fondant we'll do another video um, that's not on my laptop real soon and um, get a little bit more high quality for you I'm working on that so uh, maybe in the next week or so, I'll have uh, uh, something much better out for you. I just wanted to get this done for you. All right, we will see you on the next video. For more great ideas, visit decoratedcupcakeideas.com.